Now I would like to invite Ms. Alexandra Timoteri uh, for her speech. Ms. Alexandra holds a master degree from King's College, University of London. She is the executive director of EFG Private Bank. She has worked for several years in London in Morgan Stanley and Barclays Private Bank. For the past 10 years, she has been residing in Dubai and is currently a director in the private banking division of UBP, which is based out of DIFC. Ms. Alexandra, thank you and uh, good morning to uh, all. Thank you for joining us today in uh, this uh, great conference. I see a very good uh, turnout. I have been uh, asked by uh, Berkeley Investors Club to share some of my experience in the field of private banking, um, which I've gathered over the past 17 years, mainly um, while I worked in uh, Barclays Private Banking in London, but also since I moved to Dubai. So overall, 17 years I've been covering um, some Western expats here, but I've been also covering <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> clients from uh, the Indian subcontinent um, and uh, also from Africa. So. Uh, I consider myself very privileged that uh, I have covered uh, clients from developed markets, from emerging markets, and from frontier markets. So in Dubai itself, I arrived 12 years ago, and I realized that uh, I realized that Gulf is a rather saturated market in terms of private banking, um, and therefore I decided to expand. Uh, my coverage uh, in terms of my client base and I started uh, traveling more often uh, to the markets of South Asia. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, we all realize, uh, since the majority of us, um, especially in this room, come from the region, that the opportunities that exist in South Asia are tremendous, and I'm not talking only uh, about private banking, but in general as the growth potential of the region. In terms of uh, wealth management itself, itself, there is a huge adapt uh, pool and the opportunities are very substantial. The majority of the clients that uh, I meet in uh, South Asia, and that also applies to many emerging and other frontier markets from other regions, is that they have access, obviously, to banking facilities, but that is mainly retail banking. Um, and often it would be basic retail banking. So in terms of the amount of wealth um, they have accumulated over the years uh, because of their success in their respective industries, there is a huge uh, discrepancy in terms of their products and, and the financial sophistication that is available to them. Um, however, with the arrival of the new wealth, uh, the internet, uh, the globalization, I see a huge demand uh, from South Asian countries and investors for new, more sophisticated uh, financial investments and products um, that expand outside of the borders of their own countries. I have encountered um, many requirements uh, that are very specific to uh, the emerging and frontier markets of uh, the South Asian countries. Uh, rather than the requirements that I've seen in the more traditional private banking, uh, private banking markets of Europe and uh, uh, the US. Uh, the new money is the result, obviously, of fast-growing and successful uh, industries. And uh, my clients want to invest mainly to achieve uh, diversification. That's both geographical and currency. As, uh, um, We've uh, heard about uh, the issues that uh, a lot of our, uh, unfortunately, a lot of our neighboring countries are facing with the currency volatility that is affecting um, the wealth uh, picture as well as the, the businesses. Um, and also cheaper than the liquidity they can access uh, locally. So what we're trying to do is provide them with superior investment ideas and portfolio management but at the same time not restricting their liquidity and providing credit facilities where they can draw down 
and can use uh, that cash either to um, reinvest with us or to inject it back into their businesses or into their own countries. And that is at a fraction of what they can borrow with their local banks. Uh, and this is exactly what we have been doing over the past uh, 12 years plus, which is to provide advice and access to sophisticated financial products. Um, I personally take pride because I think it's very important to educate uh, our clients and to teach them about the, how, the importance of geographical and currency diversification. And all of this has been done at a fraction of the cost they have been uh, paying locally through some very competitive fee structures. Now, you've probably heard from several sources, from several people that are wealth managers, they are financial advisors, they are private bankers. But to be a proper, a well-rounded wealth advisor, you need to be a generalist, but at the same time to have a good understanding of several parameters, which I try to summarize them here. So the most important, obviously, is to understand the construction and to be involved in the strategic decisions that we take when we construct portfolios for our clients, so, which is part of the asset management that we do. Uh, another um, area where I've seen huge demand in the region uh, and in South uh, Asian countries especially is advice on succession planning and uh, advice on um, how to secure or to pass on the wealth to the next generation through the setup of trusts, foundations uh, and so on. And also, as I mentioned before, um, to have access to credit facilities and liquidity management so that at any point in time, especially for entrepreneurs, when they require access to the cash uh, or to an amount of cash, that is available so that their assets are not locked in. This is what I call holistic wealth, ma wealth management. Um, this is how we do uh, wealth management, which I think this is the proper way to look after someone's wealth. Uh, we need to be able to identify uh, all the requirements, all the needs from our clients and then tailor the products and the advice we provide to them according to that. Now, all this, um, unfortunately, does not come, uh, it's not a free lunch, is what we call in the financial language. Uh, it comes at a substantial price because unfortunately there are several challenges we are facing in the um, frontier markets uh, that doesn't only include frontier markets of South Asia of course but that's a global phenomenon. So the major issue that uh, I've encountered and my clients obviously are encountering is the lack of proximity to major financial centers. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what I find is that people are particularly grateful when you travel such a long distance uh, in order to go and visit them and uh, meet their families and see their businesses and really understand um, where they're coming from and what they need. So, um, with Dubai, however, being a hub, uh, for the whole region is here in, in South Asia. Um, that has assisted that a lot because a lot of the clients are often visiting Dubai uh, either for personal reasons or for uh, business and it's easier for us to, uh, to deal with them and for them to have access to, their, uh, to the main bankers. Um, the major issue which uh, is causing um, uh, is causing a a particular uh, problem when we're trying to onboard clients from uh, South Asian or other emerging or uh, frontier markets is um, and the fact that unfortunately many of the countries are high in the global corruption index which translates into a lengthy onboarding and account opening process which often requires a lot of paperwork and a lot of patience uh, from uh, the end of our client and also uh, from my end because um, I have to deal with compliance. Sometimes I do not necessarily agree with the requirements but I have to be the mediator between the client and them in order to be able 
to onboard the client. So um, the main issue, and this has been exacerbated after the events of the September the 11th, uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the circumstances, as you can imagine, it is uh, very important when we are onboarding a, a private client uh, to establish the source of wealth. And often in uh, countries in uh, South Asia, where uh, frontier markets, there is a lack of transparency. And also, uh, in many of them, the financial systems uh, do not comply to OECD uh, requirements. Uh, the OECD has to do uh, with the tax transparency globally. So that makes a lot of the compliance people in, in Switzerland or in other financial centers uh, quite nervous. So it adds uh, in terms of uh, risk factors and it makes our life, as you can imagine, much more difficult. An additional uh, factor um, which adds up to the challenges in the frontier markets and emerging markets in South Asia is a higher degree of uh, credit risk that uh, we, offer, we often face. Um, this mainly applies to non-Lombard. By non-Lombard, I mean uh, loans that are unsecured, that uh, where the collateral is not within the bank. So in that instance, the bank is uh, particularly the banks are particularly um, cautious when it comes to uh, lending uh, uh, assets uh, to uh, their clients. Uh, because what we've seen is that the legal frameworks can be very complex and quite vague in some of the, the jurisdictions. <coughs> Nevertheless, we have done it for some of our major clients. Uh, it requires quite a lot of legal work, but uh, I have to say that working for a flexible Swiss private bank, uh, I've seen uh, uh, the advantages of that several times. And the final challenge, which I, it's quite uh, important because it uh, unfortunately um, causes investors to have unrealistic expectations, is the higher interest rates in many of uh, the countries of, of, of South Asia. And those in turn cause high cash deposit rates. So when you have in your own country an interest rate of uh, 10, 12, 15% in your local bank, why would you come to a Swiss private bank and uh, set up a portfolio that gives you a return of 5 or 6% a year? So um, again, it's a matter, I believe, of, of education and about explaining to the clients that it's not always about the, the return. And we have to see also long term in terms of uh, in terms of the wealth preservation. And I believe that the essence of Swiss private banking is wealth preservation. Uh, because at the end of the day, the majority of our clients, they take the major risk in their own businesses. They don't want to duplicate that risk also with their private banking accounts. And to give you an example, I mean, this is something that even happens in developed markets. And uh, we all uh, probably remember the case of Iceland, where uh, uh, just before the financial crisis, their banks, they were strapped for liquidity. So they were giving interest rates up to 7-8%. And uh, there were so many investors that have deposited cash there. And uh, unfortunately, after the financial crisis, they lost huge amounts uh, of money. And um, a more recent example is that of Lebanon, where a lot of my Lebanese clients used to say to me, um, Alex, no, we're not going to increase our account size because uh, we trust the Lebanese uh, um, financial system. It didn't even collapse during the, the civil war. Uh, but unfortunately, recently, the financial and the economic uh, circumstances have changed massively in uh, Lebanon. And uh, the assets uh, were frozen in the local banks. So all the clients that had the majority of their wealth in Lebanon uh, are stuck because they cannot access their wealth. So these are just two examples in order to understand why we need to have diversification, especially when our savings are a very substantial amounts of money. Um, I just wanted to uh, wrap up. Uh, I just want to keep it simple. I know we are approaching uh, lunchtime, lunch break. That. Um, 
I wanted to highlight that another lesson that we've learned from the financial crisis, something that the financial crisis has taught us, is that we are in a completely new era. We are in a truly new era when it comes to economic conditions. They are completely unprecedented. And uh, I have to say that we have to be extra careful in terms of how we choose our uh, financial providers, how we choose our wealth managers, uh, and not just the bank to be a reputable institution, but also our advisor to be someone with integrity, someone that has uh, solid academic qualifications, and they can help us, they can assist us in our wealth management journey. Thank you. Thank you.